What's up guys? We're back with another BioLane video log and uh, I know it's been a while but I think I got a good one for you guys today. A um, few housekeeping things before we get started. Uh, I want you guys to know that uh, we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up especially in spring of 2014. I'm going to be going back to Australia as some of you already know for the 2014 uh, tour of Australia and uh, but not only am I going uh, we're bringing VIP camps to Australia in Melbourne and Sydney and uh, what you guys need to know is that the VIP camps are crazy so it's not just me it's the VIP camps are two-day camps not just me but also uh, half a dozen other awesome people like Dr. Joe Klimzetsky, like Brooke Erickson, like Paul Ravella, like Ben Escrow, Jeremy Linicky, uh, soon to be Dr. Jeremy Linicky, Ryan Doris, just uh, Corey Probst, like it's going to be awesome. All these people are um, high level athletes, uh, Philip Ricardo Jr., uh, legend in natural bodybuilding. All these people are high level athletes, high level experts, or high level coaches. So. If you're a, a competitor and want to get better at what you do, this is awesome. If you're a coach and you want to become a better coach, this is awesome. If you're a trainer and you want to become a better trainer, you will learn so much. And uh, not only just that, but the amount of uh, motivation you're going to get from this group of people uh, is insane. It's, it's like nothing you can possibly imagine. We've done two here in the States. And... Uh, only opened them up to just my clients and uh, and they sold out in like a day and um, now we're, we're in Australia it's gonna be available to anybody not just my clients but uh, it is limit spaces are limited so if you're interested please go to uh, VIP muscle and, and check out the information there I also am doing day camps one day camps with just me in uh, Brisbane uh, in Perth and in Sydney. However, Sydney and Perth are already completely sold out. Uh, only Brisbane is left. But there are tickets left for the VIP camps in Sydney and Melbourne. Okay, so the VIP camps in Sydney and Melbourne. So please, if you're interested, go to VIPMuscleCamp.com and check those out. Um, now, as far as other places I'm going, I'm. Some of you know I was in the UK with Physique Elite uh, in November. Had a really awesome seminar there, um, loved going there, and I am coming back in May. And I will obviously be there for Body Power, so I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of you guys at Body Power. And I'm uh, going to be working with uh, Physique Elite again, probably, and uh, also with uh, the Body Power crew. I'm really excited about that. Those guys are great. But I'll be doing a tour of the UK with Ben Coomer. And uh, we are going to be hitting London, we are going to be hitting Dublin, Ireland, and we're also going to be in Newcastle, okay? So if you're interested in uh, those day camps, those seminars, please go to lanenortonuktour.co.uk, okay? And I'll leave these links in the description for you guys to check out. So super excited about that stuff, but okay, done with done with shameless plugging. Let's let's get to the let's get to uh, the the meat and potatoes of today. So today's talk is called, Is Your Weight Loss Diet Making You Fatter? <laughs> and uh, extremely provocative title, right? And uh, we've talked a lot about metabolic adaptation, metabolic damage. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with the metabolic adaptation series of videos, uh, I really recommend them. Those videos will give you the mechanistic basis for some of the stuff I'm going to talk about. Um, they're they're going to give you kind of the how. Now I'm kind of going to Kind of, we're going to kind of step back from the mechanistic details and we're going to look at an overview of why this stuff is important and why I think that traditional dieting, the way people traditionally diet, actually hurts them. Okay? In terms of, it hurts them in terms of their, their long term fat loss ability. All right? So, starting with the title, uh, this title kind of came about. Um, from some data that I looked at from Delu, um, and they did a, 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 um, a research review called uh, "How Dieting Makes Some Fatter," 
So obviously my title of this talk is obviously derived from that. And it was from the perspective of autoregulation, meaning what does your body do to fight you when you diet? And especially when you go on very, very low calorie diets that, that we've discussed in the previous metabolic adaptation series of videos. And the really, really interesting data is that people in general, the amount of fat they gain during their life is directly proportionate to the number of times they attempt to diet. I'm going to say that again. The amount of body fat someone gains during their life is typically proportional to the amount of times they attempt to diet. Now, again, we've discussed before, especially in the Think For Yourself video series, that correlation is not causation, okay? So just because something is correlated with something else does not mean it causes it. So that doesn't mean that dieting causes you to gain fat. And I would never say that in the short term, okay, that this, this is important, in the short term reducing your calories is not going to make you gain fat, okay? But does it hurt your long-term fat loss potential and can it make you fatter over time? Okay? And to go and to break this down further, so a lot of people will, the criticism of this data is that, well, if you're overweight or you're obese, obviously you're going to attempt to diet more times in your life. And so that explains the correlation. And certainly that explains part of the correlation, but it doesn't explain all of it. And, and the reason is they looked at uh, twins, homozygous twins. So you're looking at genetically identical people, essentially. And they looked at twin data versus which twin tried to diet more during their life. And what they found was the twin who attempted to diet more, twins, you know, out of the twin pairs that attempted to diet more, the twin who attempted to diet more gained more body fat throughout the course of their life. So what's happening? Why, why would that be? Another really interesting um, piece of athletic data is they looked at uh, uh, Finnish athletes uh, who had to either make weight for events, okay, like for example wrestling or boxing or you know things that have weight classes, or people who uh, never had to make weight. They, they, just, they just worried about their event. And they showed that people who had to make weight, the number of times they attempted to diet to make weight, they actually proportionately gained more body fat during the course of their life. And how often do we see this with uh, athletes who are now out of the sport, who had to make weight, boxers and wrestlers and these sorts of things, who are now very, very overweight, okay? So... And, and, and in both these sorts of cases, they documented this, this uh, phenomenon called body fat overshooting, whereby uh, not only did they, after the diet was over and they started eating no normal again, did they get back to their original body fat, but they also shot past their original body fat. And I'm sure many of you as competitors or people who have dieted before, let's say you went on a 12-week diet and you lost 20 pounds. Um, when you went back, or let's say you got really aggressive and you lost 30 pounds, all right, 20, 30 pounds. When you went back to eating again, what happened? You were probably more hungry than when you were dieting. Am I right? Uh, I know a lot of you will, will know what I'm talking about. This is not something that's just you or an individual thing. This hyperphagy, they call it, body fat overshooting, is an extremely uh, common thing. And so what happens is that a lot of these adaptations you make when you're dieting down, that your body makes, uh, reduction of metabolic rate, reduction of you know, energy expenditure, reduced uh, thyroid hormone, uh, uh, th these things, not only do you have them happen while you're dieting down to try to stop your weight loss, okay? Because if you go really low calorie, you create this energy gap and it, in the words of McLean, uh, who wrote another review on this, it's fantastic. You activate your body's self-defense system. Okay, and that self-defense system is hell-bent on getting you back to energy homeostasis and closing that energy gap. Okay, so it lowered, the overall effect of this is a lowered metabolic rate. But many of these adaptations persist even after the diet is done. Okay, so they persist for a certain period of time after the diet is done. 
And one of these things is your appetite. And so, like I said, people who have lost, you know, 20, 30 pounds in 12 weeks, you'll notice that you're hungrier after you start eating again. And a lot of times, not only will you hit that original body fat, but you'll fly right past it. So you actually end up having more body fat than you did before you started dieting down. Okay, and this was documented. One, one interesting thing is that there was a, um, a study by Nindel and Young, and they looked at people in army training that had to basically uh, eat very low calories on very, very, very high activity. Okay, I believe it was army rangers. And what they found was even if they didn't overeat, okay, even if they didn't. Uh, have hyper well they, they had hyperphagy they were hungry but even if they just went back to eating the normal amount that they ate before right after the diet was done uh, that they still overshot their body fat okay so what do you have happening here you have happening a when you go very low calorie when you disturb the body you awaken the self-defense system that we talk about um, you basically create an environment where fat gain is rapid and you promote uh, body fat overshooting, okay? Now, what, what are some of the physiological things that cause this? Now, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because again, we've talked about metabolic adaptation. I would recommend you going back and looking, uh, re watching that video series, but very quickly, there's a multitude of metabolic adaptations that cause this metabolic slowing. Um, and we'll just hit on, a few, uh, on them real quick, but they affect almost every energy system, okay? So you get a decrease in your metabolic rate through a decrease in total energy expenditure, resting energy expenditure, uh, exercise energy expenditure, uh, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and decreased thermic effect of food. Okay, so all those things drop, all right? So again, trying to close that energy gap that you created. Uh, you also get what's called uh, increased efficiency. Now, in previous videos, we talked about how everybody thinks about efficiency is a good thing, but efficiency is a terrible thing for fat loss, okay? <laughs> you want to be as metabolically inefficient as possible. This is why I always chuckle when I hear people saying, um, you want to do detoxes or, or something of this nature. You, you don't want to eat this because it has toxins and your body has to spend energy to get rid of those toxins and so it can't burn fat. Um, that makes absolutely no sense from a thermodynamic perspective. And when somebody says something like that, I can be absolutely full, sh sure that they are full of crap, okay? Because if something costs you more energy to take care of it, then uh, it actually increases metabolic rate. Uh, high metabolic rate is energetically inefficient, okay? Think about this in terms of gas mileage, all right? Uh, if you get 100 miles per gallon, that's pretty me uh, efficient, right? So if you can maintain your body weight on a thousand calories a day, that's pretty metabolically efficient, okay? But if you get one gap, well, one mile to gallon, that's not very uh, efficient. If you maintain, if, if it takes you 3,000 calories to maintain your body weight, that's not very metabolically efficient. But efficiency is a bad thing for fat loss, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, when you diet, your body increases mitochondrial efficiency. So your mitochondria are these little organelles in your cells that uh, is where you essentially burn fat, okay? You also get in decreased thermogenesis. Uh, thermogenesis is inefficient, again, uh, which uh, through reduced expression of uncoupling proteins. And you can also see this because there's what's called uh, decreased proton, le uh, proton leaking, which I'm not going to get into because it's extremely uh, biochemistry dense, but essentially a proton gradient in your mitochondrial membrane is how uh, you create ATP your energy currency, okay? It's a lot more involved than that, and I'm, again, not going to take you on a biochemistry lesson, but essentially, when you have proton leak, okay, it's inefficient, it burns a lot of calories, it makes ATP production less efficient, which is a good thing for fat loss. So you have decreased proton leak. Um, you get decreased expression of uh, complexes in your cells responsible for fat loss. Uh, you get increased expression of complexes that are responsible for gaining fat. So your body is not only trying to close this energy gap that you've created by, by going super low calorie, uh, it's also 
attempting and preparing you for weight regain, rapid rate weight regain, once you have finished with that diet. Uh, your thyroid hormone drops. You get a decrease in sympathetic nervous system tone. Uh, your sympathetic nervous system, again, is uh, burns a lot of energy. Uh, decreased leptin, which is an extremely important hormone for fat loss. Increased ghrelin, which controls a lot of hunger signals. Increased insulin sensitivity. Now, a lot of people think about insulin sensitivity as a good thing, and it is a good thing in muscle cells, but in, it also happens in fat cells. So your fat cells get uh, sensitive to, to carbohydrate intake. So anybody ever had this happen where you're, you're um, on a ketogenic diet, something very low carb, and then as soon as you're done and you add in carbohydrates, it feels like you just swallowed a balloon, like you just blow up. Well, yes, and people want to say, well, a ketogenic diet makes you, you know, more insulin sensitive. Well, yes, it makes your fat cells more insulin sensitive. <laughs> so they're ready to soak up those carbohydrates once you start putting them back in. Um, probably most uh, interesting is the actual adaptations of the adipose tissue itself. Um, again, we talked about you get decreased leptin, but you also get decreased cell size, okay? And, and, and so typically how we lose fat and gain fat is your cells, you have a set cell number and your cells will shrink and uh, when you lose fat and they will uh, increase in size when you gain fat, okay? And your cell number kind of determines your what's called a body fat set point, okay? So your, your body and your fat cells sense their size and when you shrink a fat cell, it it will start, you'll send out signals to start lowering leptin, lower metabolic rate, all these sorts of adaptations we talk about because it's trying to close that energy gap, okay? And when you gain body fat, when, you're, when your fat cells increase in size, it will raise leptin and it will raise your metabolic rate and those sorts of things to try to keep you from going above your body fat set point, all right? Again, trying to maintain homeostasis. The interesting thing is um, McLean has actually shown that when you diet very low calorie, and then you uh, regain the weight very rapidly, like most people do in, in weight loss diets, how do the, most people diet? Super low calorie, then when they're done, when they hit their goal, okay, I'm just gonna go back to eating whatever, and they put it all on very quickly. McLean actually showed that your body can start to produce new fat cells, and so you can actually increase your total fat cell number. Now, why is this a problem? Well, when you have, uh, like we said, let's say you get back up to your original, your, your body fat uh, level, okay? And let's say, just let's use easy numbers, okay? Let's say you start with a million fat cells, okay? Now that's not anywhere close to what the actual number is, but let's say you, just for the sake of argument, you start with a million, all right? You diet down, they shrink, the number stays the million, okay? Or around there. Uh, your, the, your cells shrink, okay, and then when you start to refeed again, when you start to uh, just eat whatever again, and, and you rapidly regain the weight, your body actually starts producing new fat cells. So let's say you have a million and a half now, so you have 1.5 million fat cells, all right? When you get back to your original uh, body fat, let's say it was 12% body fat, whatever, um, you have the same amount of fat mass, but each individual cell is now smaller, okay? Because you have more of them. Now the problem with that is, remember we talked about, small fat cells have lower leptin and are more sensitive to insulin and more ready to regain body fat. So what happens? You're still more hungry than you were before, before you started the diet, even at the same total fat mass. And that may explain a large portion of body fat overshooting, okay? So this is extremely important to understand, all right? And now you're starting to get the picture of how, of the why of the how, okay? When, what I mean by that is why do people who diet more times throughout their life tend to gain more body fat? Well. I don't think it's because dieting makes you fat. I think it's because the circumstances that typical diets create, they lower your metabolic rate. They create all these different circumstances, this huge energy gap, so that when you start eating again, 
not only do you regain all the body fat you lost very rapidly, but you go past that, okay? So you have that body fat overshooting. And as we we're talking about, with the creation of these new fat cells with rapid post-diet overfeeding, you can actually set a new body fat set point, <laughs> which is bad. You can go from being where you're, and how many times have, we, have, you, have you seen this? Somebody who was, let's say take somebody, who knows somebody who was pretty lean when they started uh, like prepping for shows the first time, and then over the course of years, actually their off-season body fat is now much higher than it was when they started. I hear this from competitors all the time. Okay, so now what I want to show you guys is I want to bring back the BioLane wipe-off board and show you a hypothetical chart of progress, okay? I always, I always have trouble getting this thing centered when I start because it's kind of like a mirror. Okay, all right, so we have a few different variables. So we have time on the x-axis here, okay? And we have this variable of metabolic rate here, this, the, the solid line is metabolic rate. The dashed line is calorie intake. And the body fat level is, is, your, is, your, is your dotted line, okay? So let's look at what happens. Typically, body fat, metabolic rate, and calorie intake are all kind of interrelated. And that's what you see here at the beginning of a diet. All right? like a typical fat loss diet that we see out there. Um, very low calorie, you know, 800 to 12,000, 1,200 calories, you know, typical guru uh, <laughs> cal uh, low calorie diet for, for you know, for, for especially for women. Um, so you drop your, your calorie intake, you know, right, you know, right down very quickly. And so what have you done, okay? You've created this energy gap that we talk about here, okay? So you have this gap. So what happens? Okay, so here's your metabolic rate. So your body slowly brings down your metabolic rate in order to recover that energy gap, to, to normalize it, to get it back to homeostasis, to get to where these three things are about the same again. So, and, and you see your body fat comes down. So I'm not saying you can't lose body fat on low calories. Absolutely you can the first time. So you, you create this energy gap, you get down here, your metabolic rate slows down, your, your body fat drops. Now, what happens when you start, let's say this is a competition diet. Somebody finishes their show and immediately just goes back to whatever they were doing before, okay? So their calorie intake goes all the way back up, right? But the problem is, we talked about, is you have this hyperphagy, where you can, a lot of times you consume more than before. So let's say they go a little bit higher up. And they regain their body fat very, very quickly, okay? In a lot of cases, do this body fat, body fat overshooting right here, okay? But your metabolic rate takes more time to recover because of these metabolic adaptations we talk about, okay? So you get to this point where you've regained all your body fat, you, you've gone so high calorie, but your metabolic rate still has not fully recovered. And what happens? Well, a lot of these people, they say, oh my God, I hate the way I look. Uh, I can't stand the way I look. I'm fat again, etc., etc." Um, uh, you know, all you guys who've done a diet know this. Once you have this massive fat regain, you get depressed. So what happens? They immediately start trying to diet back down. But now their metabolic rate, they have this huge disconnect between their body fat level and their metabolic rate. So over here, right, these three things are pretty close together. But over here, they're much further apart. So you start dieting again. Okay, so you bring down your calorie intake back to where it was before. And sure, your body fat starts to come off, but look at your, your metabolic rate. So now your metabolic rate starts dropping again. And eventually it gets to the point where your metabolic rate and your calorie intake, they meet. Okay, and then fat loss ceases, stops. But your body fat's still higher than it was before. I cannot tell you the number of people I have personally witnessed have this happen to them, okay? It's not that dieting makes you fat. It's that the metabolic adaptations that occur during low-calorie dieting set you up for massive fat regain and not full recovery of your metabolic rate before they start dieting again and cause this problem, okay? So the problem is not this. The problem is not when you have these three variables together. The problem is when you create this major disconnect between the two, okay? 
And this is what we talk about in terms of metabolic adaptation or the metabolic damage series. Okay, You've got people that still have a higher body fat level who are eating low calories who are maintaining their weight. This is the problem. This is a big problem. And typically, I've kind of sped up this process. Typically, this gets worse over time. So after several cycles of this, you know, this gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, you, you can create people who are on very low calorie diets, doing a lot of activity, who have a lot of trouble dropping body fat. Now, let's talk about the opposite. So we're going to talk about reverse dieting. All right, and, and, and dieting properly, so slow dieting. So you have your restriction, but instead of just massively dropping your calories, okay, you slowly drop them down over time and you, you kind of adjust them as you go based on how you respond. And you don't create this massive energy gap, okay? There's this very small energy gap. I always tell people you should diet on as many calories as you possibly can while still maintaining the appropriate amount of body fat loss. And typically the slower you can go, the better, all right? Because you're not creating this massive energy gap that we saw in the last diagram, okay? You have a small energy gap. So you're kind of nudging your body along and preventing these massive metabolic adaptations. And you don't want to awaken the body's self-defense system like McLean talked about. Okay, so you get down to a point, but your metabolic rate will slow. Okay, that's just part of dieting. What we want to try and do is minimize the metabolic slowing. All right, so then you, let's say you finish your diet, you've gotten to your goal. Now, instead of just massively increasing your calorie intake, you reverse diet. You slowly increase your calorie intake. Now, this is more difficult <laughs> than dieting in a lot of cases for the first six weeks because like we talked about, you're going to be hungrier than you were before. Now, if you've done this portion right, hopefully not as bad, okay? So, you slowly start increasing your calories. And what you'll find is that if you slowly increase your calories, uh, you'll get adaptation in the positive direction, okay? Your metabolic rate will increase. You'll slowly recover it over time. And a lot of times, you won't even gain that much body fat. Now, you'll probably gain some, but let's say we totally recover metabolic, let's say, let's say they were eating 3,000 calories maintaining their body weight before they started this. And they maintain at 3,000 uh, calories after. Okay, they, they get back up to that. But over here they had 30 pounds of body fat, and over here they only have 20. Okay, now I'm speaking in hypotheticals, but I have seen this sort of situation occur many times. You're now, even though you've regained some body fat over here, you're now in a better long-term fat loss situation, okay? You have less body fat to lose next time you want to go to diet into an active fat loss phase, and your calories are just as high as they were before. And if you do it right, if you continue reverse dieting, hopefully you can get your calories up even higher, get your metabolism going faster, okay? So one of the things I want to impress upon you guys is that the off-season or, or kind of uh, non-active fat loss phase. You're always, you're always looking to make your metabolism better, okay, so you can lose body fat better. But the period where you're not dieting, where you're not in active fat loss phase, is still just as important as the active fat loss phase. Because the key, in my opinion, to long-term maintainable fat loss and improved body composition is keeping a healthy metabolic rate. And most of the diets out there that are promoted by the national media, that are promoted uh, as fat fast loss solutions, that are promoted by these you know weight loss gurus, uh, are super low calorie. They create this energy gap we talk about and produce um, body fat overshooting uh, and honestly um, make people crazy. <laughs> Uh, just, I cannot tell you how many people uh, have come to me after some of these diets and been depressed, they hate the way they look, but they also just feel terrible. Um, I couldn't get everything I wanted into this one video, it's a lot of subject matter to cover. Um, I'm going to talk further about reverse dieting in my next video log, but I hope the things you take away from this are, one, 
Again, you want to diet on as many calories as you possibly can. You don't want to create this massive energy gap and cause these large scale metabolic adaptations that we talk about. And two, when you're done with that diet, slowly increase calories back uh, into, into, um, into your diet, okay? Don't just massively jump up back to what you were doing before because you've got decreased metabolic rate, you've got basically a perfect storm for uh, fat gain and you will gain fat back very quickly and even overshoot your original body fat if you are not cautious about how you proceed okay so i hope you guys enjoyed this video log uh, we're going to talk more about this subject and uh, i look forward to uh, hearing you guys feedback you have a great one thank you for watching